Well, so uh, first off, let me get started with pulling things up here. And uh, hopefully, I trust that everybody will be able to see the screen here about the presentation here. So again, this is the, um, this is basically for the high school, the junior high, the junior high. Wow, that shows my age. Middle school uh, will be happening at the same time as well as some other ones this afternoon as well. So if you are a parent, uh, you have an opportunity of being able to uh, sign up for something else, uh, another one of those uh, at a later time. So um, welcome again, just a reminder, uh, do have your microphones and your videos uh, turned off for the moment and uh, we will uh, make certain we get through this as best as we can. So what we're gonna go through, uh, the basically the new bell schedule that we've got set up uh, beginning on this Wednesday. Uh, talk a bit about Google Classroom and Google Calendar, how they are gonna work together, how that all ties back in with our PLP, uh, the Summit platform. We'll talk about Spotlight and what that's gonna be used for. Uh, emails, because that's been a big issue for some of the families that have already picked up things and then some information to pick up in the family handbook as well. So bell schedule, where and when students are gonna be able to attend their virtual classes. So we've come up with a virtual bell schedule so students can make certain that they've got connections with each of their classes, at least on a weekly basis um, uh, through Hangouts and through Google Meets as we're doing right now. Um, they might be working as a whole class. They might be working in smaller groups as a teacher may designate. So um, just to give you a little bit of, uh, you should have already received this letter uh, just before the break, but um, I want to make sure I pull up uh, the basic general schedule starting at, at, at nine o'clock. Um, is when Spotlight will be happening for all of the classes, both uh, middle school and high school. And then uh, the schedule basically runs a Monday, Wednesday, and a Tuesday, Thursday, in terms of what they will see. Um, obviously, the uh, bio and history are happening at 10 o'clock on Mondays and Wednesdays. Um, then the science and English with econ. And then the afternoons, pretty much across the board, are, are dedicated to the arts side of things. On Tuesdays and Thursdays is where the math will be happening at 10 o'clock, and then English will be happening at um, 11 o'clock at that point. So again, that, this is the overall general schedule for what's going to be happening. On Fridays, there's a lot of office hour time, which I'll talk about in a little bit um, as well. But obviously in times when students are not in any of these particular classes, if, they, if they're not needing to be in those classes, you know, that will be an opportunity to check in with uh, teachers to be able to determine um, uh, what, out, what, they, what they're wanting to work on, what they need to work on as well. So as we continue on, um, the classroom. Many of you have already gotten signed up. I know as an example for my high school students in Algebra 2, everybody has signed up on this, which is great. Um, so this may or may not apply to your understanding, but just to make certain we're all on the same, on the same page with all of this. Basically, um, as you go into Google Classroom, you're going to see your initial page, which has all of the um, classes that uh, will be listed for your student. Um, the daily and the weekly announcements from the teachers will be in each one of these uh, different individual classes, as well as weekly assignments, which will be posted by 8 a.m. each Monday morning. There will also be video resources, uh, recordings of the lectures, everything that, that we as teachers are going to be going through will be recorded, um, or PDFs of readings as well. You'll also notice here there's a counseling corner, which our counseling staff um, is maintaining as well for uh, lots of different resources uh, to support you and to support your student uh, during this particular time. So um, all students should have received invitations for joining each one of these classes. Um, if they have not, uh, they just need to contact the teacher via email. Now parents, you should also have an opportunity to be able to look at this. But the key thing is the students need to accept the entry into the class before the parents and the guardians can be able to 
also see what is going on. Um, as a parent or as a guardian, you will get uh, automatic or daily weekly summaries based on what you're choosing to do. Um, I'll show you in a little bit where to in the settings um, adjust that because I know that there have been several parents that have been concerned by the volume of email um, uh, email that they've been getting actually for each, each of the uh, different classes and so forth. But the key things that students need to accept to get into the class before the parents and guardians will also have access to that. Now from the home page in the classroom, um, you'll see three different things. There's the stream, which is sort of the ongoing, everything that happens uh, within the class, be that a new assignment is posted um, or comment, everything is here within the stream. And that's just sort of an ongoing diary uh, or a news feed, as it were, of what's going on um, in chronological order. Classwork will tell you everything you need to do, know in terms of the assignments, the resources, any kinds of grading that's that's going on within that. So on the left side here for the topics, they they um, you'll see how it's broken down usually by unit, and uh, usually within that there'll be a, a heading up here, and each of the work that's underneath that will it'll be easy to get to that. You also see the due dates um, here as well. They will usually keep that in 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 order of when those dates are, are, are doing that. Now, when you click on a specific assignment, you'll see everything that's needed in terms of what's, you know, what resources have been prepared, any directions, any, um, any indications, but you can also get more specific information when you click on view the assignment, and then you get the actual student's viewpoint of what the directions are and even what specific resources to that student would be available on top of that. Um, teachers will be posting information about the assignments on the classroom, but here's where the, here's where we just need to clarify how this is going, how this will work. Um, we've chosen the classroom because it's easy given that all of the students have Chromebooks and that they're connected in with, with Google Chrome, of course. Um, as a result, using the classroom is the most, is the easiest way to be able to post everything and to make certain that all the students have access to that. The actual assignment submission, though, for the most part, is still going to be happening on Summit, still happening on the PLP for all of those things, because that's where the grades are still going to be posted and updated as well, at least in terms of the academic courses. Obviously, PowerSchool is still going to be holding all of the artistic side, uh, sides of stuff. Um, so it might be checkpoints, might be projects. Uh, it depends upon what each, um, what each uh, teacher is requiring from each of the students. So again, you're going you're gonna to have to be able to navigate back and forth between the classroom where the assignments are and uh, to the PLP where the actual posting and the submission of those assignments are going to be. Um, so from a uh, specific thing, for example, this is just a continuing on. Uh, so when you're going through, for example, in this case, there's a set of Google Slides. There are files to be able to create any number of things that, that students might need to submit. So to complete an actual assignment, um, basically just clicking, clicking on the assignment and under the Your Work section, if something else needs to be added, they, the students can upload that. And then when they're done, they ultimately just click turn in so that the, the teachers can see that it's been submitted and they can continue doing that. Um, this also applies, I've had this, uh, I've done this already with several of my students in Algebra 2 and in Math 8 of doing retakes of uh, previous assessments, previous tests online. And they're basically doing the exact same thing as once they're accessing the test and then completing it, then they just click on it, turning it in. Um, again, and there's a nice uh, feature here that specific comments can be sent to the teachers uh, immediately. And we get that, we will get those even in our emails, a, a private comment that we can respond to uh, if there is anything. Um, obviously, we'll talk about the notifications um, in, in a moment about which ones to receive or, or to not. One of the nice things about the connection with Classroom is it goes directly into the Google Calendar that is um, both connected to your student's email account 
as well as to uh, classroom itself. So um, to help the students, there'll be invitations that are being sent out about office hours, uh, about uh, both hangout meets that we've got, or even possibility, I know that there's somebody that's joined by phones as well. So um, even if the students don't think they're gonna be able to make the session, it will be good that they go ahead and, and say that they will. Uh, that way we can tell that the students have indeed seen it and that they've acknowledged that yes, this is going on and that that, that is there, um, even in terms of you know, the optional office hours and so forth. So there, again, there are the possibilities to be able to, to uh, connect with the, those meets um, whenever students are available and whenever the teachers can, can be able to do that. Again, as you see, you can, you can see that all of the classes in the background um, are set up for uh, the students and it comes directly from everything that happens within the classroom. Um, so again, um, the why we're using the calendar, again, because it is directly connected to the classroom and all of this information really comes in very, very handy for all of these. So um, how is the POP, I alluded to this earlier, being used um, in conjunction with the shift in one sense to classroom? So what's happening between the two? Again, classroom is gonna be used every single day um, as, as well as weekly announcements from the teachers about what is going on, what content, what projects are happening. Um, the weekly assignments, including the checkpoints and the projects, will be posted there by Monday morning. So you can check first thing on Monday morning and see exactly what the rest of the week is going to look like. Any kind of resources, um, recorded class lectures or readings like flip classroom uh, models that, um, that some of us have already uh, begun to use, those will, those will be in place. Also, it's a good, play, good way for students to communicate uh, between each other uh, via the comments feature. The PLP summit is still going to be the place where the checkpoints and the projects have to be turned in. Uh, that's where all the grading has been and where continue, will, will continue to be for all the academic courses. So that does not change. Focus areas will also be taken. Uh, there, and I'll comment a little bit more about that in, in a second. So that still is going to be happening uh, in conjunction with each of the teachers, and all of the grades are still going to be happening uh, and posted on that one. So students do need to check the classroom on a daily basis, um, and there will be specific instructions about things that need to be completed and uploaded to uh, Summit. You know, to the PLP for that. So it's very, very important that students are looking at everything, all of their classes on a daily basis. <laughs> so just a reminder, if you joined us late, uh, do please go ahead and mute your microphones and your videos. That way, um, that way we you can uh, all benefit from it. <laughs> So what will happen to the focus areas? Well, uh, everything that was scheduled after spring break is supposed to come up. Again, just a reminder, if you can, go ahead and mute your microphones. That would be helpful. Thank you. Um, everything that was scheduled for after spring break has been shifted to an additional focus area. So uh, anything that was due prior to spring break is still going to be required and still due for the end. Notice things have shifted on the PLP in terms of where which bar they are under, either under power or under additional. So all the additional focus areas are now optional, and students can take them to help boost the grades. Um, so that is a shift, but those are still happening on the PLP. Oh, there's Michael. Oh, really? um, go ahead and mute your microphone, please, for the moment. Thank you. Um, all focus area originally scheduled. Yeah, can you go ahead and, and Bora, can you turn off your microphone? I turn off the microphone. 
Turn it off, please, Bora. Thank you. Turn on or turn off? Turn it off. Thank you, Bora. Okay. Uh, let's uh, let me get back to this. Okay. So next up, um, the checkpoints and the projects. Um, all the assignments and activities are going to be viewable on the Google Classroom as well as the PLP. So part of it is the students should prioritize, uh, and this is part of what Spotlight is going to be for, uh, prioritize the beginning of each day, what's going to be help for the best use of their time and staying up to date with their weekly assignments. So students uh, can also help, as I mentioned, with the spotlight, uh, with their spotlight teachers. They can get support in figuring out ways to being able to do uh, catching up on missing checkpoints and overdue projects. Um, everything else here, this is pretty standard uh, about the about the traffic lights in terms of green, yellow, and red. So again, green and yellow. Uh, there's not a need for resubmission. Obviously, the red is the key thing to be aware of. Any incomplete or missing work, that has to be cleared up, um, uh, obviously, as the, the rest of the year code goes on. So for Spotlight, um, from 9 to 10, uh, from 9 to 9.50 every day, uh, the Spotlight will be happening. And uh, all the students are expected to be there to be able to get things sorted out, to get some input from their spotlight teachers and to just to get connected for the day. So the idea is to, to use that time to help the students navigating the classroom as well as the PLP to come up with some plans to stay on track with the weekly assignments and to get caught up with the overdue work and the focus areas. So um, there's a lot going on, and particularly under the circumstances, we know that, that uh, people may be feeling overwhelmed. And so this is, this is an important time really for students to be able to get things sorted out, even on a daily basis, in order to be able to um, be effective in getting the work done and so forth. So um, this is going to be very, very crucial, this 9 to 9.50 time each day. A lot of parents have been concerned just about the, the number, um, and even parent, students have been saying this, the number of email notifications. So um, here's, here's a way to be able to sift through the classroom and to determine what it is that you're wanting to receive notifications on. First thing is up in the top, up when you're on your main page here, uh, the initial page for uh, the classroom, if you take a look at the, uh, the triple bar icon in the top left corner, and if you click on that and drop down to the settings down below, uh, there's the wheel icon. Uh, go ahead and click on that. Then you will notice that there's a listing here of notifications of what different things you can. If you click on receive email notifications, this one here, if you turn it to gray, which means it's been muted, that will eliminate every notification that you've got. We don't recommend that um, unless you know as a student and as a parent that you're gonna be checking things every single day um, and even maybe a couple of times in the day because that will eliminate all of this information down here. You might find it more helpful to take a look at the different categories. Uh, for example, comments. Well, what kind of comments do you wanna receive? Um, maybe about stuff within specific classes that, you, that you're enrolled in as well. So make sure that you go through this list to see, okay, well, maybe I only want to get uh, something about comments on my posts or comments on that, but I don't necessarily want to have all these other things sent to me every single time. Or even when there's a, a new posting from a teacher, I think that's, that's a, been a big one. As soon as something's posted from a teacher or a student gets it, and uh, that might not be what you want to do, but you might want to receive that. So go through this and make sure you determine exactly which notifications you want to receive. Um, and those that you don't, go ahead and click uh, the button so it will go to gray and you won't receive that. Um, again, so this is what I just mentioned. Uh, if you click the receive email notifications and turn it to gray, you won't receive anything. 
but um, that means you just need to be able to check it on a daily basis for that. Um, some questions that we've been hearing. Uh, so just to be able to give some general ones about that, I uh, have not been able to track uh, the, this, the chat that Ms. Ramos has got. Is attendance required? How, did, how does your child check in? We're not going to be able to do any kind of formal attendance in that respect, but we do expect that all the students are going to be online at the scheduled time. Um, we'll be sending out invites to help students keep track of the new schedule so that they've got that. Um, and we do, it, it is easy for us to be able to see who is actually there and who is participating in submitting the assignments. How do I know if your student's really doing that? Um, there are apps, uh, the GoGuardian system, which we use at school. Uh, they have been released so that parents can monitor what is going on. Um, we also can monitor what's going on as long as we have something set up for a particular period of time, but that's not going to be a 24 hour kind of a thing. If you as a parent are wanting to, to check in that, uh, we would strongly recommend that you take a look at that in the, the uh, Apple and the Google app stores for that. How about if you're getting sick and following behind? Um, just like if it were, we were physically present um, at SPA, the, the same thing should happen. If, if uh, students are feeling sick, if they're feeling like they're not going to be able to get anything done in a few days, just be in communication with your teachers about that um, as for normal. Um, and for the students to, to really ask for, well, what's a good way to, feel, to deal with a work completion plan? Um, that could be either for when you're getting behind, as I've done with a lot of my students, or just in general when you feel like when you're getting better. Um, so again, all of the class sessions are going to be posted there so that you won't miss anything. So you'll have them both in the classroom as well as on the PLP. Um, if you need additional support, there's a lot of information that's already uh, been posted on the uh, main page of the Spa, Cocoa Spa website. If you look under the Departments and Student Services, you'll have a lot of contact information and quick links uh, for that. But start with your teachers. Do start with the Spotlight teachers as well. They can give a lot of guidance for that. If any, in any case, you're feeling overwhelmed in some, in some way, uh, emotionally or otherwise, do check in with Ms. Ramos, uh, with Mustafa, or Ms. P. Um, they are always going to be available for that. Um, again, I did show uh, initially on the, on the page that there's a, a counseling um, a page within Classroom that you can take a look at as well for other resources on top of that. But don't hesitate to reach out and to ask for help in whatever way you need it. Technology issues. We've already had uh, several students whose Chromebooks have um, either stopped working or are not working very well during this particular time. So if you uh, need help with that, do check in with our tech director, Tyler. Here is his phone number right here. Um, again, this whole presentation will be posted uh, online, so you'll have access to that. You can also email at, at helpdesk at cocospa.org. Uh, he's being very, very um, on top of things to be able to do that. One key to, to remember, if you've got anything, a uh, broken Chromebook or screen keyboard, you can set up an appointment with Melissa uh, to be able to drop off of it free of charge. Uh, we know that this is a really kind of a frustrating kind of a time when this is a, becoming a main access point to, to the instruction. And if, if the students don't have that access, then that becomes um, very stressful. We know that. So do not hesitate to set up an appointment with Melissa and to do something about a replacement as well. Again, staying up to date, you'll notice it as well, there's a, a link up at the top of the web page for SPA that has all the updated information about COVID-19. You'll have uh, with the, um, the family handbook has updated a lot of different things about all of these um, information in terms of much of which I've talked to you about already, but all of this will be listed um, on, the, on the updated handbook online. And so you can um, 
this will be active and you can be able to uh, click through all of these links. Questions, let's um, go back here and see if there's any questions that can be answered. I think there was only one, um, or a couple, but one about work um, and how to prioritize if they don't finish um, an assignment that was like given one day and they have to like, they don't finish that day. Can they, how do they prioritize that? Um, I think most of the teachers uh, were very aware of the limitations of this particular kind of a thing in terms of learning at distance. And a lot of the things that we've been reading uh, as a result of what teachers have learned in China uh, and even in Europe about that, we're very aware that the pace is different and the pace is, I don't know if you'd say slower, but there's just limitations in terms of really how much we can all take in for that. So we're very aware that things may not necessarily happen online or on time online, I should say. And so the best thing to do is just make sure you're in communication with the teachers. We're all very aware of that. You're going to find a lot of grace coming from everybody uh, during this particular time. So that's the key thing is really to be able to just uh, check in with your teachers and um, make certain that you, you see with what's going on with that. Other questions? Just looking here through the chat and everything. Um, right. Um, I'm just looking through another orientation sign up and everything. Obviously, um, there for the high school there is Fridays. Fridays is very, very wide open in terms of, um, well, for the middle school as well, but that's a, a primary office hour time. Also, if you're not actually in a particular classroom at that designated time, you can always check in with other teachers and find times outside of the schedule that are going to work for that. So uh, I know I've done that a lot with my Algebra 2 students, and we found various times to be able to, to make things up. So that's all of it. That's that's uh, that's the main main thing. Main way to be able to do that is just check and see, and make some arrangements for that. Uh, let's see. Question about future tests, like the ones you give. Um, one, we're having a discussion this afternoon. Uh, during our meeting about that, exactly what that's going to look like. Or um, as I mentioned earlier for myself, there have been, there have been uh, makeup tests that have been happening online and those have been working out very well. Uh, in terms of will that happen in terms of future tests for current content or coming forward, that's a discussion point that we're hopefully going to have an answer to um this afternoon once we once we've talked with the administration about that okay if um if there are no more questions at the moment again this this whole presentation is going to be posted on uh, the web page and um, in probably a, another another areas as well. And all of your spotlight teachers, in fact, all the teachers will have access to that um, as well. If you have any other further questions, don't hesitate to send out emails, send out questions to the teachers, and um, particularly during this time. We have a lot of things that are that are going on with that, so we're used to we're used to um, you know getting back to you as quickly as we can since we're sitting in front of all of that. So um, anyway, thank you for checking in, um, and um, 
we will take this one step at a time and we'll make the adjustments with that. So thanks to everybody and let's just keep moving forward with that. Um, let's see.